Yeah. You know, well, with you know, with the with the small ball, bigger hole. Yeah. <laughs> I use but I'm gonna use me a tennis yeah. ball tomorrow. <laughs> huh? Get me a tennis ball out here. Hey, Willie boy. Huh? Where are we going anyway? I'm just following the crowd. Oh, we go this way. <laughs> well, I got a caddy. Don't know where the hell he's going either. <laughs> Every year, the Open seems to attract more and more people, and this year was no exception. Once again, the records were broken, and 84,000 people came to watch in the four days. Lee Trevino, the gay extrovert, and also, incidentally, the holder. He only just got here in time from the Canadian Open. Uh, no, I have a marker. I have a small coin here. But that sort of thing would bother him less than almost any other player. Okay. All eyes, though, are really on Jack Nicholas and the prospect of his grand slam. He's got two legs in hand already. Now he wants this one and the USPGA Championship. As the ancient jug which has crossed the Atlantic so many times, can we keep it at home this time? The honourable company of Edinburgh golfers, whose course this is, haven't always played here. They started two centuries ago at Musselburgh, and then they moved to Leith, near Edinburgh, and before the turn of the century came to their present home in this beautiful spot here, overlooking the Firth of Forth. On the other side of the Firth, the two hills they call the Paps of Fife. And on the far right, if you could see that far, would be St Andrews. The big tented village, which is such a feature of modern championships. And more nations are represented here than ever. Lee Trevino prepares to defend his title. This first hole proved to be one of the most difficult par fours on the course. He seemed happy with that. Among those playing in the morning of the first day, is the great Arnold Palmer. That's too much. He's won it twice, but never here at Millfield. <coughs> He's got enough club. Yeah. Could have hit a lot more today. Also from the United States, Frank Beard. The only one to use the bigger ball. And Mr. Lou, who created such a sensation at Birkdale the previous year, without his hat this time. The way I can make a two is to cheat. <laughs> Everybody's making all these deuces. Many of the great American players have formed very close attachment with their caddy. This is Lee Trevino and Willie Aitchison. Then there's Palmer and Tip Anderson, and well, Nicholas and Jimmy Dickinson. I'll tell you, it's going to be a beautiful day. Man could get light complected over here if you live very long. Palmer. Not a terribly good round this morning. Not quite with it. Doug Sanders on his way to 71. Billy Casper holds out on the last for a 72. That keeps him in the running. And now Trevino on the 18th. He has to get down in two from here for a par 71. does it right in the middle of the hole. A good par start for Trevino. And there are the scores for the leaders in the morning round. And they've had a lovely morning to perform in. And believe it or not, it was only this afternoon that we had any rain in the four days. 
The lake, yes, Port Lake. Well, there's no doubt that Nicholas has got the worst of the weather for the first day. The eyes of all golfing enthusiasts, both in this country and in the United States, are on him now to see if he can carry on with his grand slam. In winning the Masters and the US Open earlier in the year, Jack Nicklaus has led in both events in every round. He chances a wooden club at the very narrow opening up there and seems happy with it. Also out in the worst of the weather, Tony Jacklin, who a couple of years ago held the open titles on both sides of the Atlantic at once. A Gary Player, who won here in 59, one of only three people to have won the open with four scores, each one lower than the one before. Jack Nicholas. It's the third and that for a birdie and he gets it. But on the long fifth, where he could be looking for another birdie, the slope defeats him. Five for Nicholas. <laughs> Tony Jacklin on the 11th. He has this for a birdie. And makes it on his way to a 69. Jack Nicholas again. Second shot to the long ninth. <coughs> 495 yards, and he goes right onto the back of the green. Now he's got a long chance here of an eagle three. Oh, look at that. Still, that's a birdie for, for Nicholas, and he's out in 34. Then he went on to get a three at the 10th, go three under, here he is at the 11th. And pitches up and down it goes into the bunker at the back. goes quite a way by, and he'd be hard put to it to save a par four here. So Nicholas drops a stroke at the 11th, quite an easy hole, and goes two under par. And that seemed to check the flow, and he finishes in 70. Better conditions now as the afternoon goes on. And there in the distance, the dim tracery of the two great fourth bridges. But the leader on the first day is young Peter Tupling, a Yorkshireman only one year turned pro. There's a magnificent second and a great stress for Tupling at the 18th. And he'll have this one for a 67 to go four under par. Just doesn't quite, but he leads anyway with 68. So at the end of the first day, it's Tupling three under, Jacqueline two under, Nicholas one under, and Trevino even. For the second round, we had an absolutely perfect day. Crowds pouring in from the early morning, all enjoying themselves in the sunshine, but in fact, the leading players not really matching with their scores the summer weather. Jacqueline. On the sixth, has a long one for a try for a birdie. And in it goes to the general delight. He always comes up with a big occasion, Jacqueline. In the meantime, Nicholas is out in 38. Here he is on the 11th. This is where he took five on the first day, going into that bunker.
And that's a very different kettle of fish for the second day. And he has this for three to make up for the five. And that seems to set him going again. And he finishes in even par with Jacqueline one under and most of the rest still to come in. P. Trevino in the thick stuff for his second at the ninth. 495 yards and a par five, but if you're on the fairway, you can often reach it. Now he gets that one out very well, <laughs> pressing on towards the green, and in fact, very nearly reaches it. That's a great shot from that rough. Two more for a birdie. Still about four and a half feet to go there for Trevino. And it goes in by what they call the tradesman's entrance, but they all cut. So that's 36 out for Trevino. He finishes in 70, one under for two rounds. And attention now passes to Doug Sanders. Here he is on the 15th. And when the ball's almost come to rest, it drops in for a birdie to put Sanders leading the tournament at this stage with two under. Sanders always been a great favourite in England, or should I say Britain. And I shouldn't think any golfer in history has had more sympathy for one shot than he did for his four-foot miss in the 1970 Open at St Andrews. Now the crowd round the 18th see that as the score is altered, Sanders has had another birdie at the 17th, and now he's three under, and he leads the field at this moment by two. There he is on the 18th, and he's in a bunker on the right. I really shouldn't have thought they need the book for that one because all he's got to do is to get out of it and make sure that he gets onto the fairway with a, some sort of chance of a pitch and putt to salvage his, his fall. And that's how deep that bunker is. Now he's safely out of there, but he hasn't done what he should do. He should have turned half left and made sure of getting on the fairway but he's still in the rough on the right of the green. Not as thick as it was in 66 when Nicholas won, but it's still quite thick. Now, it'll pitch up to the green for Sanders. He's there for two. And that's way over the back of the green, leaving him a very awkward little one back. There's one character who doesn't think much of it either. So that's over the back in three for Saunders, and that tricky little one down to the flag, avoiding at all costs the bunker. Oh, that's rather stabbed. The slope catches it down in the bunker for four. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear for Saunders. Awkwardly placed at that. Almost impossible to stop the ball shortly enough there. The green sloping away from him, so he's got at long last this for a six. And this for a seven. And so in a few minutes, all the good work is undone. And Sanders loses the lead, loses three shots, and now it's Trevino and Jacqueline, one under, leading after two rounds. And for the third round, some more wonderful weather, huge crowds pouring in again, and all the players they've come to see grouped together at the top of the tree. Isn't this a beautiful day? This would even be a nice day in Houston. And the big crowd here couldn't be enjoying themselves more if they were at Houston instead of under the shadow of Gillen Hill. And here's Doug Saunders now, even par level with Nicholas. First hole, one behind Trevino and Jacqueline. 
Never popular, he gets a good hand, he gets it up the middle. Jack Nicholas, what a determined countenance that is. And still thinking in terms of this grand slam. The usual noises when Nicholas drives, people saying, oh. Yes, player. They all rush up around the first green, and it's Nicholas to play, it's second now. And there's a marvellous shot coming up, which will give him an obvious outside chance of a birdie three to set him on his way. Gary Player, perhaps the greatest bunker player of them all. But not with that particular one. Nicholas, this for a birdie three. <coughs> Just slips by, but it should be all right. it isn't all right and so Nicholas starts with a very disappointing five goes one over we move on with the crowd to the fourth tee short hole with Doug Sanders yes, very good shot indeed and it gives him a chance of a birdie Sanders, even par. They call it L for level in Britain. And there he goes with a two and one under. On the long fifth, which they can often reach in two, Jacqueline putting for a three. And there's an eagle three for Jacqueline. He goes three under par and at this moment leads the open. Sanders on the eighth. This for a birdie three. And in it goes and puts him three under level with Jacqueline. On the short seventh, Gary Player. And there's no doubt where that one is. In a bird's nest in the bunker on the left. see if he can do better out of this bunker than the one at the first. But now that's two we've seen Gary Player do, really not very good by his great standard. He needs that to save the par, but no, and it's a four for Player at this short hole and he fades away with a 76. Now Sanders at the ninth, the long hole, alongside the grey wall, all the way along on the left. He's played two, par five. But that one goes out of the rough stuff on the left there, quite a long way past the flag. They're all looking for birdie fours at this hole. And Sanders, once again, has found one. He's out in 32. <laughs> he bows again. And the scoreboard says Jacqueline three under, Trevino one under, and Sanders now four under. <laughs> Crowd rush along ahead of him. Now we see his second shot up to the 12th. The making of a great round coming up here and just look at that one. It's only about four feet for a birdie three at the twelfth. And that's the sort of thing that makes strong men snap their butter across their knees. It's only Jacqueline. A little refreshment on the way. Now he comes up to the ninth as well. This is his second shot. They can make it in two today, par five. 
characteristic pose by Jacqueline. One wonders sometimes why, looking into the sun like that, they don't wear some form of hat. And now he needs this one for a birdie four to catch Sanders at four under. But no, and very dejected, Tony Jacklin looks. So near. So he taps it in for five, and it's Jacklin three under, Trevino one under, Sanders four under, and Nicholas even. Oh, my God. What's Henry Longhurst saying? Oh, my boy. Ah, and that he'll never know. So now, Doug Sanders has dropped back from four under to two under. And here he is at the 17th. Par five, reachable in two, wanting this for a birdie four, and it just creeps in. And so that's one gain for Sanders, and it's now Trevino two under, Jacqueline three, Sanders three, and Nicholas one over. And here is Nicholas, 16th short hole, he's gone over the green. And that's the one Nicholas is looking for. So that brings him back to even by chipping in for a two. Now to the 18th, where Sanders had that terrible experience yesterday, and he's playing the second to the green. Looks to be pushed out a little. There's a curious shaped bunker on the right of the green waiting for him, and it's got him. We saw innumerable players in this little bunker. And he gets a big hand for that, but he won't think very much of it himself. He needs a four for 68. Just misses that 69 for Doug Sanders and two under par altogether. And behind him, Trevino in a hot streak here. He's had birdies at the 14th and 15th to go three under. That, lo that looks to be hooked to me, it's the short 16th. And in fact it is, and he's very awkwardly placed in the bunker there. He's three under, but looks like losing one here. See how awkwardly that lies in the back of the bunker, and he's got to get it up over the face and stop it fairly quickly. Very difficult one. Looks like going over the back. And instead of that, it goes straight into the middle of the hole and disappears like a rabbit on the second bunch. And I verily think it would have gone over the back of the green. So there's a two for Trevino. He goes four under. Not an easy moment for his playing partner, Jacqueline. Can you believe that? You know, now, Jacqueline, on in one. Chance of a two, but not quite. And so, provided he gets this one in, they'll both be four under and tying for the lead. <laughs> And that's safely in, and they both get birdie fours at the 17th, and so as they come to the 18th tee, they're both five under. Torino first. Yes, Jacqueline. Oh, no. Yesterday. All my trouble seems so far away. Then I... Yesterday. And I know why. really does that to try and keep himself relaxed. Where you at, Willie? Come here, boy. 
Not to make a birdie here. I never made five birdies in a row in Great Britain. I mean, in yeah. Scotland, excuse me. <laughs> Huh? No. So he's right, he's had four in a row, but uh, we've only seen one three at the 18th in the whole of the championship so far. <laughs> no hesitation. Pitches it up. Six iron. And too far. And over the bat. About a yard. Hard to bear for Jackie. He's had four birdies in a row thrown at him already. And here's Trevino from the back trying to get down in two more for his par. Well, that really was a diabolical one. Five in a row. What an achievement. And how it must have made the hole shrink for Jackie. Championship at this moment does look between these two. Five in a row. He's got this to stay even with Trevino. And that's still a very nasty one indeed, but he's got the hole made these scenes of almost unparalleled excitement. He's still got to hold that one to stay one behind. And there's a really brave putt by Jacqueline at the end of the day. Now, I wonder if you can lip read. And so it's 66 for Trevino and Jacqueline with a 67 loses a stroke. And the end of the third round, it's Trevino six under, Jacqueline five, Sanders two, Barnes one, and Nicholas even. And the crowds leave the big stands that are so characteristic of the open, and the sun sets over the sea at the end of the third day. For the fourth round, record crowds looking forward to a really memorable day's golf. All of them at any rate, bar one. Nicholas starting six behind now and surely out of it. <laughs> That's way down the middle. He's got to go for everything now. Defensive golf, no good. And this is for a par four, which anybody would settle for on the first. And Nicholas gets his par four to a safe getaway. Unlike so. Sanders, five. Jacqueline. Five. Trevino. Five. Now Nicholas, having made birdies at the second and third, comes up to the long fifth, which he can reach in two. <laughs> and that's a beautiful second shot, which gives him even a chance of an eagle three. It's not to be, but we can almost give him that one. And that's a birdie for Nicholas, and he's three under, having started even. Now back to the short fourth against the background of Gillen Hill. Tony Jacklin. <laughs> and that's just in the rough, and it disturbs what is undoubtedly the fastest spectator we shall see today. Back to Doug Sanders on the sixth. He's got this long one to go two under. And in goes yet another. Sanders has held a tremendous number of putts here, and here he is on the seventh, putting for a two. 
and yet another one, and that's three under for some. And on the long fifth, Trevino, still the leader, defending champion, but in a bit of trouble over the back in three. Takes a putter. Doubtful wisdom, one would have thought, and it does get caught up in the grass a bit and stays well short of the flag. Trevino having played four at this par five hole. Now, and that's not going to make it. So it's a six for Trevino. He goes from six under to five. <laughs> Trevino five under, Jacqueline four, Nicholas three, Sanders two. And just in front of the green at the par five ninth, Jack Nicholas. Now three under. Two more for a birdie, four. Just right for length, but rather wide. Still, he's still got great chance of a birdie. And if he gets it, he'll be out in 32. There it is. 32 for Jack Nicholas, starting even, now four under. <laughs> Jacqueline putts on the short seventh. And up comes our four-footed friend again. Can't get out of the ring of spectators. Just at a critical moment behind Trevino's right eye. And it puts him off quite obviously, and who wouldn't be if you saw hair run right behind you as you putted? And so he's going to lose a shot there. <laughs> so Trevino now with a four at this short hole goes to four under. <laughs> Jacqueline has this one, his par three, and it goes one of a great many of that length that he held. But now Nicholas, starting six behind, shares the lead with Trevino at four under. Here he is, playing his second to the tenth. He's out in 32 already, remember. a magnificent one by Nicholas. There's another birdie, and here is a charge, if ever there was one in golf, by Nicholas. In fact, at this particular moment, he actually leads the field. Jacqueline. It's his second shot to the long ninth. They can just make it today. Yes, a magnificent one, probably the best seen in the whole championship. An obvious chance from Eagle Three, and up along comes Trevino. And that one's very nearly as good. So it'll be Trevino first. Eagle three for Trevino at the ninth. So that's six under and back in the lead. Meanwhile, Nicholas has played another wonderful second to the 11th. Just look at that one. But at the same moment, there's Jacqueline on the ninth, putting for his eagle. And that's two of them on this par five ninth hole. And the tumultuous shout from four or five hundred yards away puts Nicholas off and has to stop and start again.
but in it goes, and so it's Nicholas now, starting even, six under, level with Trevino, both one ahead of Jacqueline. And among the spectators for the final round, in the dark glasses, Princess Margaret. Now the 12th, par four, Trevino pitching up to the green. <laughs> Trevino sharing the lead with Nicholas at the moment, one ahead of Jackson. Two fine shots to the twelfth. In the meantime, Jack Nicholas, same moment, is teeing off at the fifteenth. Jacqueline on the 12th, about five yards is for a birdie to go six under. But of course, a tremendous roar comes up as Jacqueline holds that one to share the lead with Nicholas and Trevino, a three at the 12th. Starts again on the 15th. This time, another loud shout as Trevino just misses, and that puts all three of them together at six up. <laughs> so now, for the third time in four holes, Nicholas has to stop and start again. Great test of nerve. Makes no difference to him. He unleashes a huge one this 15th. Just a few feet into the semi rough on the right hand side. <coughs> six under for this round, six under for the championship. One of the great challenging rounds that any of us can remember. And there's yet another putt with a possible birdie three for Nicholas. This is the 15th. By such little things, our championships decided. And there's a par four, he stays six under. Now looking from behind, the short 16th. That always looked as if he'd had a bit of right shoulder in it. And in fact, it pitches out of our sight in the bank, just leaning up towards the green from the left. Tricky little shot, but in this sort of form, one would expect him to get down in two more. Par three. Not bad from there, but uh, just the length you rather hope you don't leave yourself this stage. Oh, so near, and yet another one. That's the first time he's exceeded par in this wonderful round, and it sets him back to five under. And Nicholas fails to get the birdie four at the 17th, which is well within his power. Comes to the 18th, five under, one off the lead. <laughs> And safely on the green, but asking rather too much to get that one in to go and join in the lead at six under again. He gets a tremendous hand, very, very popular here, and what a wonderful scene to finish this championship. This was where he won six years ago. Now, almost a forlorn hope for Jack Nicholas. 12 yards away. And not quite. And with that putt goes almost certainly his hopes of the great grand slam.
66 for Jack Nicholas, and it might have been 62. Back down the 18th fairway, Doug Saunders. He's three under. And he's caught by rolling into that curious shaped bunker on the right of the green like so many people before him. <laughs> also bunkered, Brian Barnes. He's one under and the leading British player apart from Jacklin. And there's a magnificent one to finish with for Barnes. He finishes one under. Sanders now wants to get down in two from this bunker to stay three under. And as he puts for his par four, one knows what's going through his mind, even though he gets it. That is, why did I take seven here in the second round? So back at the 17th, Trevino and Jacqueline, each six under, leading the field together. One of them must surely be the winner. And that's a bad one by Trevino. It's hooked into a bunker under a steep face. He's disgusted. That looks to be swinging in Jacqueline's favor. Look at that one under that face there. Just gets it out onto the fairway. Still a long way to go. This is a par five home, but Jacqueline can just about reach it in two. There's Trevino's third, and he's equally disgusted with that. Throws his club away and starts to walk over to the thick rough, which they have to spend a moment looking for. It. And as they walk over there, he says to Jacqueline, I'm through, it's all yours. Still about 120 yards to go for his fourth shot. <laughs> That's another disappointment. It runs about 12 feet over the back of the green. So Trevino over in four. Jacqueline with a good second, just short in two. Level pegging, both six under, and one of them must be the winner. Simple little shot for Jacqueline. He knows so well in these seaside courses. Well, it could have been a little nearer. It's about six yards. Get as near as you can, but still, he must surely get a five, and Trevino must surely take six. Trevino chips it nonchalantly down there. And nobody believes our eyes, but confound it, that's the fourth time in this championship and Trevino tips it in from off the green. Really diabolical. <laughs> so now, Jacqueline has got to get down in two to keep level. Shot by. Anybody would pray not to have one like that in circumstances like this. And there it is. And it's six for Jacqueline. And a moment that he will remember and go over and over again all his life. Nearly on in two, down in six. Trevino off in four, down in five. But if I say that, that Trevino's chip was diabolical, I don't mean that it was in any way unpopular. So now they come to the last hole with Trevino really almost unaccountably one ahead. plays with refreshing speed, this very important shot. And just look at the result, only about six feet from the hole.
Jacqueline was really rocked by that one at the 17th. He confessed that afterwards, and who wouldn't be? He gets a very fine hand for these huge stands, but uh, his heart must be very sad. Trevino can hardly believe it's true. Jacqueline in the bunker in two. And now, after all this, he wants to get down in two more to keep even with Jack Nicholas. No wonder he walks wearily out of the bunker. Everybody would like to have seen that one in, but he's just run out of steam now. So it's a five for Jacqueline to finish, and this is six five, and it's one behind Jack Nicholas. Now the final scene for Trevino, and he's got two for it. He just misses, but it's my guess that if he'd only had one for it, he would have got it in. So Lee Trevino is yet again the champion and he gets a really cordial hand from all these spectators around the last green at Muirfield. <laughs> and so on this lovely summer evening, the 101st British Open Championship passes into history. score of 278, prize money of 5,500 pounds, the champion golfer of the year, Lee Trevino. Short guy. <laughs> I, I really don't know what to say of all the uh, words of encouragement that Jack has given me in the past couple of years seem to be paying off. Uh, I know he probably wished he'd have kept his mouth shut. <laughs> probably a couple, but this is the way Jack Nicholas is, is. He tries to help as many fellow golf professionals as he possibly can. But I've enjoyed it, and I want to leave you with one thing. 84,000 people is unbelievable, and I think that you enjoyed the weather. I hope you enjoyed the championship. I'm very proud to be your Open champion once again, and I hope to see you again next year. Thank you very much.